Okay, here we are with the Young Companions magazine, and this is the Washington edition of 1910. It says number 1910, but this is February uh, 17th. Okay, and the story we're going to read to you this time uh, as we go through the magazine, because this is like 125 years ago. Uh, so we're bringing you stories that were written way back then, and this one is titled just the minister's wife. Okay, and this will be read to you by Jennifer Bowyer. There we go. Just the minister's wife. Mrs. Richmond sat by the open window. Her happy gaze caressed the distant hills, the springtime hills that for so many weary months she had thought never to see again. Now she was up once more, a prisoner still, but able to look and listen and understand how beautiful was the world that she had so nearly lost. The church bells were ringing softly, their clearness muffled a little by distance, but still potently sweet in tone. They make me sad, thought the minister's wife. I have been so long away from any service. It will be such weeks before I can go again. Then at the click of the gate, she pulled herself together. Dr. Richmond and the boys would soon be coming. Mother's room was the first goal, and it would never do to let them see that mother, always so bright and gay and cheerful, even when enduring greatest pain, was in a fit of the dumps. Just because she was getting well, just because the scent of the lilacs and the sound of the church bells had made her feel a little lonesome and away from the world. But it was a girl's light step that ran quickly up the stairs, a girl's eager voice that begged to come in, and Eleanor Lane, her arms heaped with daffodils, leaned over and kissed Mrs. Richmond's forehead. Where shall I put them? she asked, holding out the flowers. They're from the church. I've left them every week, you know, but today when Dr. Richmond told me that you were sit sitting up, I begged him to let me really bring them. Now that you are getting well, I don't believe the parish will give you a moment's rest. You don't know how we've missed you. You've all been so kind, too kind, Mrs. Richmond murmured. Her thin cheeks flushing with pleasure. I had no idea I was so blessed in friends. But of course you would be thoughtful, inattentive because of Dr. Richmond. Not at all, broke in Eleanor a little ho hotly. It's you yourself. We love Dr. Richmond, too. But don't you realize what you've meant and do mean to the parish? <clears throat> but my dear, interrupted Mrs. Richmond, still flushed and a little bewildered, you can't know how it weighed on me, this uselessness of mine, for I've never been really the minister's wife. I've just been Mrs. Richmond. I never had a voice, so I couldn't take my place in the choir. I wasn't the least bit musical. I couldn't even play the organ accompaniments of the Sunday school hymns. And there were always so many, many little children about my knees that I seemed constantly conducting home kindergarten classes and sewing societies all of my own. I thought so often as I lay here this winter how much better it would have been if Dr. Richmond had chosen someone more worthy, more able to help him than I have been. And do you never remember, answered Miss Lane gently, the year I came here, a forlorn, like little frightened to death to school teacher, and my Thanksgiving with you just became my home was so far away. Don't you ever think of the Baker twins from that forsaken copper mining region that never would have known anything of Christianity or decency if you hadn't cared for them? Don't you know how much all of us realize that Dr. Richmond's splendid theories of life and charity and love come from his happiness with you? Oh, Mrs. Richmond, the parish would be so poor if it had lost you. After the girl had gone, Mrs. Richmond sat musingly happy, and when the boys came trooping in, 
they saw the same old glad unquenchable smile that they always looked for and always found on their mother's face. At last, Mrs. Richmond understood that her simple life had smelled sweet and blossomed in the dust. Very good. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for reading that to us. Hope you've enjoyed us bringing you these little stories. All right. Bye-bye.